Well, hello everyone. It's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a lovers and separation reading. So this one is going to be based on your person's late night thoughts about you. So this could be when they are going to sleep at night, uh, maybe even coming up in their dreams or just when they're in the deep reflective mode about you and this situation when they're all alone. Usually, of course, taking place late at night when everything is calmed down. So uh, just take what resonates for you and get rid of anything that doesn't. All the decks I'll be using will be listed down below. And today's organites here, we've got the Divine Masculine and Feminine Nudes created by Michelle from Wing and Bell. If you guys are interested in your own personalized version of any of these readings that I do here on YouTube, the links will be down below. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so we're just going to basically shuffle uh, these decks here that I have selected for this reading and just see what comes through. So the very first deck that I have chosen here is the Heart and Soul Love Oracle by Celestial Forecast by Carrie. So let's see what your person's late night thoughts are about you and the situation. All right. We have joy. <laughs> so the, this is what they think about. They think about the joyous time that you guys had together. It says, it really was love at first sight the moment I saw you. From that first glance that I knew was meant for only me, the brush of your hand against mine, your heartwarming smile, and everything about you that brings me joy beyond measure. Thank you for choosing me for life. So they uh, are really thinking about the joy that you brought them at one time. It could even be, of course, the joy that you still bring them from the memories that they have of the two of you. But they are thinking about your um, the brush of your hand on theirs. They're thinking about your smile, basically everything about you. And there was an instant soul recognition for them. And so they think about that spark. They think about that chemistry. They could perhaps think about it in terms of they haven't felt that with anyone else. And so there's that longing and desire to feel that once again, now that you guys are in a separation. So let's go ahead and see what else we need to know here. This is my Charm Cards Oracle deck. Let's see what we need to know here about your person's late night thoughts towards you and this connection. Ooh, we have um, horsepower. Okay. So, uh, their, their memories as well as their thoughts about you, um, you know, in those late hours or just, you know, at night are very powerful. Okay. It brings up a lot of powerful energy for them. Um, but one of the things that it does bring up more than anything is this joy. So you bring in a powerful feeling of joy for them. What I'm also seeing too is that they might think about taking power in the situation as in, you know, getting on that horse and actually charging back into your life. So I think of the knight when I see this horse. This knight would be either making communication or making moves towards you, um, but definitely coming towards you in this life. So they think about coming back. They think about making a move towards you. That's what I'm seeing for that card. All right, so this is the Forever Autumn Oracle by the Spiritual Sagittarius. What else are they thinking about at night? What are their late night thoughts about you? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so there is some animalistic energy coming through with the horse and now the werewolf. Now the werewolf, it's like, is at night. So this person is definitely thinking about you more in a night setting. It doesn't mean that they can't think about you at other uh, times during the day, but we're thinking about, or we're looking at what are their late night thoughts about you. Yeah, being confirmed, they have an appetite for you. They have a wildness. They have this beast that they want to unleash. So for me, this is about desires. This is about, you know, having you, taking you, it's Etc. It's very animalistic. It's interesting. And on the bottom of the deck, we have a letter, as in they uh, think about maybe sending you some form of communication to invite you to connect with them in this wild animalistic way. Halloween could be significant for your connection too. So that might be when they really, really think about you. And this connection is around that time of year. 
uh, just take that as it resonates. All right, let's see what else. We've got Shades of the Soul by Aqua Moonlight. What else is this person thinking of? What are their late night thoughts about you? Find the little joys. So they're thinking about the little things. There are little things that they think about that really bring them joy. And it's also these little things that might drive them crazy as, as like, you know, creates this appetite, this wild energy within them. It's like the little things that you did, these little things that were very powerful, um, small, but significant. So there could be that energy as well. So let's see, let's get into the Halloween tarot by divine love healing. Ooh, we have the Empress. So the Empress is divine feminine. They might see you as like a, um, the ultimate queen, the ultimate woman, the ultimate feminine. It's just an energy. Uh, the Empress though is a queen. The Empress is somebody that you want to be with, if you know what I'm talking about. So I definitely feel with this werewolf and this Empress, like I want to take her. I want to ravage her. I want to unleash my beast, you know? in or just, you know, just with her. So there's definitely this energy here of wanting to take you in some way, wanting to own you, um, wanting to be with you. All right, let's see what else. So this is a combination of decks from All Things Intuitive. So there's, I believe, four of her decks in here. So the way that I like to use this is I just see what comes through and then um, I'll let you know kind of the energy surrounding that card. What else is this person's, what other late night thoughts does this person have about you and this connection? Okay. So this to me is the, um, very like in the clouds. So fantasy as well as dreaming. I wish we could go back. I feel like this person dreams about going back, um, in time. Okay. They really dream about it going back in time and maybe perhaps like choosing you. And the reason that I say that is because in this particular card this talked about thank you for choosing me but did this person choose you did they choose you okay they may not have they may not have chose you uh, or chosen you in the past maybe you chose them but they did not choose you back maybe like this werewolf this werewolf lone wolf energy. I'm also getting too wanted to be alone. Didn't want to connect with a pack, wanted to just kind of figure things out. Maybe they, you know, left you behind, separated from you. So this could be their own doing. And now they're having some sort of, uh, regret with losing you or ending things with you or something like that. And so they're very reminiscent about you could even be like your physical appearance, your body, but just really everything about you, your personality as well. So it's not just your body. It's not just the way that you look It's your personality too. And they just wish that they could go back in time and like do it differently. So they, they think a lot about this at night. All right. So let's go ahead and go into this combination of cards by Rising Sun Oracle, what he didn't say, one and two. Oh, so these two cards want to pop out, so I will take them. I need to be honest with myself before I can be honest with you. So this person with their late night thoughts is that they're being really honest with themselves. Maybe they were not able to be honest with you. So they're really, really taking time to be honest about how they feel and why they feel the way that they do. Now we have, I feel your disappointment in me. I am unable to show up for you in the way that you need me to please forgive me. So they're like conjuring up some sort of like a conversation or a move that they could make towards you so where, to where they could express to you honestly with how they feel. And they know that you're disappointed because maybe this is taking a long time. Maybe it's been a while and you're just like, you know, you should have done this already. So this individual is kind of like wanting this, but not taking action, wants to, but isn't, and feels that the time just keeps slipping by and also that you're probably disappointed that they haven't done this sooner. And it's like, they know this. So they, they're very torn is what I'm seeing here. They're torn with wanting to fix this or to come back or come towards you, but they're choosing not to perhaps out of fear or something. 
All right, so let's see what else. This is my Twin Flame Journey Tarot. What else are they thinking about? Hmm, look at that. So they're really in their head, I'll tell you that. Okay, when their eyes are closed, like they're really thinking about you. That's what that Two of Swords is, that, you know, the blindfold here. We have to go within for the answers. So this person is doing some deep soul searching. They're really being honest with themselves. They're taking a good look within themselves for the answers is what I'm also seeing here with this one. So they're, unfortunately, they're at a stalemate within themselves and also, you know, with this situation. So of course they haven't made a decision on to get on that horse and actually take back the power in this situation and to make a move. So I feel like it is up to this individual. Okay. But on the bottom of the deck, I have these seven of wands. Will you be defensive if they return? It might also be that they don't have the strength to fight for this and to make it happen because they're scared. Okay. Polar bear. Bears are big, powerful animals. And so it's like, you know, like, do I have the courage and strength to be the bear? Or am I just going to kind of think about what I desire, but not really do anything about it? So I just feel like your person has some decisions to make and, um, they're just not quite sure how they're going to do it because they're still in this process of trying to figure out what, how they feel and why they feel the way that they do. So we're going to go ahead and get a conversation that they think about between the two of you, just like words exchanged. So for this portion, we're going to go into my divine masculine haunted deck and my divine feminine ghosted deck. Okay. So it's like the masculine's point of view and the feminine's point of view, like the words. Ooh, look at this. You guys, we have spells in sleepless nights. I'm thinking about you. Yeah, we already know this. Uh, your person might just feel like, like when they can't sleep, like they're sleepless, they're restless with this werewolf energy. Like they want, they want you. Um, so they are thinking about you and they're thinking about being with you in that, in all the ways that I just described and they're losing sleep and they almost feel like they're under a spell that they just can't break out of. So it has some sort of like, it feels, I should say, it feels like it has some sort of control over them to where they can't break out of that thought pattern and it has its way with them at night. So in a way, it's like what I'm seeing here is like a succubus energy, which I'm, it's not really that, but it's just what's coming to my mind. Like it is a, um, like an erotic kind of like demon that comes in and basically has its way with males at night. I'm not saying that that's what's going on here, but it's almost like they're having some sort of dream like that and it includes you. So it's like they're being haunted by the succubus energy and they're like, you know, getting sucked into that world at night. So that is that energy from them. This is the energy from the feminine. Wow. Okay. Apologize. It's too late to apologize. Did this person do something? And, and if you're the feminine watching this video, have you taken the stance that, you know what? This person did something to me. They hurt me. They haven't apologized because we know that they're taking a long time to communicate. They're taking a long time to be honest with you and to tell them how, how tell you how they feel. Uh, we have it with this card right here. I feel your disappointment in me and I'm unable to show up for you in the, in the way that you need me to, which is to apologize. So they're having this like conversation at night with you that, they know that they know that you want them to apologize, but they're having a difficult time doing that, whether it's out of fear, ego, whatever. Um, and they're sleepless and they're restless and they're feeling your energy and they are connecting with you, but they're, but when they wake up, it's not with you, <laughs> you're not there. So it's like this defeated feeling upon awakening, waking up to the reality that none of that was real, that it's just like existing somewhere in our mind and in our thoughts and our fantasies. So this deck right here is called the spirit cards. So it consists of, of uh, numbers and letters. So we're just going to see what might be popping through as far as like words that could be spelled or initials or numbers. Okay, so we have D, we have P, PD could be related to the law, like, you know, police officer, PDU, interesting, 
So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting here. I, 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 there's something I want to say. I'm not going to say it. I'm just not going to say it. I, I just, I feel, I feel like, um, someone is actually like very aroused and, um, and there, there is, there's an aftermath to that arousal. I'm just going to say that. Okay. And I just feel like that the fantasy or the thought about you is bringing this person to that particular, um, that particular, uh, outcome. <laughs> That's what I got here. Okay. And then we have obviously six and then we have the, um, F. Okay. So this to me is like F you. So it's like, you know, somebody who's screwed up and that apologize. It's too late to apologize. So this person does think about perhaps how you, the, the, the viewer, are um, in that kind of harsh stance where you're not going to let them back in. They're suffering and you're like, good, they need to suffer. Some of you are feeling that way. Um, but this person should like conjure up the courage to basically make wrongs right. And so until they do, it's like they're going to constantly be in this like restless energy over this situation. So that's just unfortunately the way that it goes. The number six could be significant. As in, um, it could be that this has been six, you know, six months. This could even be six years. This could be, um, you know, just some significant number to the connection. I do see sixes as cards of harmony. So I do, I mean, sorry, uh, numbers that are like harmonious. And so it could be that this person really does crave to be harmonious with you in this connection once again. And so until, like, in, until they they make come to this conclusion with themselves or become powerful and strong to actually take matters in their own hands and to make something happen, they're going to continue to feel effed up is what I'm getting here. Okay. So that's what we have. Let's go ahead and do another set. So the way that this reading could work is it could be kind of like a pick a card if you guys wanted it to, even though I'm not going to display it that way. Um, so if this first set of messages, you're like, you know what, that sounds like my, my, um, message. And then I start to pull another set and you're like, eh, just go ahead and stop there. Or if you want to choose obviously number two or three for your messages, you can do that as well. Okay. So let's now do the same kind of set. All right. What are your person's late night thoughts towards you about you and this situation? What do they think about at night when they're all alone about you and this situation? With the best. Wow. Well, I mean, this is the thing. You know, when you screw up royally, right? Maybe you don't value something when you should have, and I definitely got that earlier then you miss out. And I just feel like that's what has happened here. This person, you know, now sees you as the, the, the cream of the crop. They see you as the empress. They see you as the queen. They see you as the best. Maybe they thought that they were going to get someone better than you or that their life was going to turn out a certain way and it didn't. So they're like thinking about how they screwed up. I never expected us to be the best of friends so quickly, almost as if we've known each other before. And just when I started to get used to you being my best friend, you became my, my best love. I have a feeling the best is yet to come. This is really beautiful because what this tells me, I mean, yes, you guys could have started off as just friends, but what I'm picking up on that is that you guys have a soul connection, a, like, a, like a, an established connection already, maybe from a previous lifetime or something like that. And so when you came together, it was like an instant kinship. It was like an instant chemistry. You guys didn't really have to try super hard to get to know one another. But what I'm getting here is that it might have ended as quickly as it started. So this could have been like a short-lived thing. And now that there is this distance between the two of you, it's almost like this person now is going back in with the information that they have and the memories that they have of you. And they're relearning you and getting to know you all over again, but they're doing it in this, in, like from their senses. That's very cool. And like you have become something very special and very unique to this person. Now that it's almost like absence makes the heart grow fonder. 
there's something about you now that they can really connect with you. And I feel like if this individual has intimacy issues or a lot of fear, this might be the, um, the this just might be the way that they need to connect with you for, for the time being. It might be safer to connect with you in this way where it's just in their thoughts, in their dreams, in their reflections of the past. That might be how they need to operate right now, okay? But for you, the person watching the video, you're probably saying to yourself, well, they should come towards me if they want me. They should apologize if that's what they're saying to me in this reading. Everybody operates at their own you know, level of understanding or the tools that they have. And this individual, I just feel is struggling, okay? So let's see what else they're thinking about. Mm, love and romance. So, yeah, I mean, just like that joy card that came up earlier, right? They're thinking about love and romance. They're really, really in their heart space too at night. Um, their late night thoughts for you. So really thinking about how their heart feels, really leading with their heart, really like leaning into this energy with, with their heart space. I feel like even pouring their heart out to you in some sort of confession at night, like literally like in their mind, they're having this conversation with you, pouring their heart out to you. We have snowflakes. Yeah, your connection is frozen in time is what I'm seeing here. Um, it could be that there was a time where you and this individual were really like getting to know each other when the snow was falling. So it could be like the winter months for some of you guys. But yeah, this is uh, certainly this unique, um, you're the best snowflake, very unique frozen in time connection for them. So they think about that. They think about that energy a lot. breathe and find inner calm. So they could also be meditating or when they're sitting down, like when they're laying down or they're sitting down, it's late at night, they're, they're breathing, they're calm. You might also be like a very calming energy for them. So they're thinking about you in times of, um, like relax, relaxation. They're thinking about you and, and it's bringing them some sort of relaxed feeling. Um, but I'm getting for some of you guys, this person could actually be like a meditator like they meditate and they're really connecting with your heart space um, and, and the heart of you and this connection through that meditation. Okay. With 10 of wands, this can be a little bit of a burden for this person though. That's why we might have breathe and find inner calm. They might feel very overwhelmed. Um, obviously early, or we got the um, energy here of the horse, which is like very powerful, very powerful energies. So what are the powerful energies? The powerful energies are joy, which is wonderful. It's that beauty, it's that love, it's that heart space, it's that romance, right? But then we also have this energy here of the werewolf, which is animalistic, which is I want to unleash this beast. I want to be with you. I'm thinking about you. I desire you, right? I wish we could go back to the way things were. So... They're very uh, back and forth with their energy. They're trying to actually find inner peace. They're trying to find balance right now with how they feel. And I just feel in some way it's like they're being driven wild and they're being driven crazy, but they're also like, um, you know, trying to see the beauty in this, I guess, process and trying to just kind of breathe through it and find that inner peace and find that inner calm, maybe even forgiving themselves for something if they were the ones that created a burden here. Kind of like, it didn't have to go this way, but it did because of your actions, because of your behavior. It's like they're aware that they created this burden. They're aware that this is burdensome. So they, it's a burden that they have to bear. So I'm, I'm getting to that this individual is taking responsibility with what they've done. And they feel now it's like the burden that they have to bear. So they almost feel like they deserve it. So they're not blaming and they're not feeling sorry for themselves because they know that like this just unfortunately is the consequence of their actions. That's what I'm seeing with that.
I bury myself and work to forget you. So this person could be the type of um, individual that works really late at night. Okay. So what they're, when they're thinking, like maybe when they should be sleeping, but because they're restless, they're working instead. So maybe they're a creator of some sort. Maybe they're, an, you know, independent to where they, they work on the computer or something. So they're able to like work at their own pace or work from home. So they bury themselves and work at night, or it could be that they have a night job, but I feel like it's more of an independent person that buries themselves in projects to, in order to kind of like dissipate some of this energy that they're feeling. So that way they can find that inner calmness. So your memory and this connection really uh, gets to this person. It's, it's a, uh, it's a burden for them. Okay. We can overcome this dark time. So they also think about how you guys can overcome this period of time, the storm that you guys have experienced. We have that tornado that's basically about ready to rip through that town and destroy everything. So that could be a representation of what they feel has happened with your connection. Maybe they feel like they were the storm. They were the storm that blew through and just like tore everything apart. But they do believe or they want to believe that you guys can overcome this dark time. So they think about that. They think about overcoming this darkness with you, overcoming this phase to where maybe the two of you are not able to, um, you know, uh, be together right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a. Uh... It's unfinished business with the world. Saturn is also the uh, planet of karma, restrictions, and burdens. So the Ten of Wands here makes sense to me. They do want closure. They, they want to be able to complete the cycle, but they feel like they can't. They feel like there's unfinished business. They feel like if they could just talk to you or see you, then this part of themselves or this torment could end. Um, but they also are like kind of trying to scramble for the strength in order to carry that out in order to, you know, move towards you and to make, make a move is what I'm getting here. So it, it might be that like you have already decided in your mind that, um, unless this person makes moves towards you, nothing's going to happen. And they might know that they might know that maybe on some level, maybe they were thinking that you would come back and you never did. And that could be something also where it's like, this is this one chapter that I can't close out. It's that one feeling that I can't close up. And so it's hanging in the balance and it's a burden on them and it's unfinished business and they wish that they can overcome it and they want to overcome it with you. Um, but they don't know either if they, if it will happen um, or if they can. So that's just where it's at right now. All right, let's go ahead and get the words here from these, from the masculine in the situation. You got the best of me. So there's something about the best. The best. They're actually saying here, like, they, they gave you something very unique. They shared something with you that they didn't share with other people. They let you into a point. Um, but then we have bringing on the heartbreak. So to me, it's like, even though they gave you something special, they still broke your heart, right? And even if they saw, they saw you as like, you know, something so significant and, and amazing and beautiful and unique, they still broke your heart. It's like, why would you break someone's heart if you feel such joy and you, you know, love all these things about them and they're so amazing? Why would you break their heart? I feel like this person has a lot of stuff that they're working through. They have a lot of um, just unresolved conflicts within themselves, a lot of baggage. And, you know, maybe they had to put this connection down in order to finally deal with it. But I just feel that they're really reflecting on what could have been here, right? They really did give something to you that was the best that they could. Um, but it's like they ended up breaking your heart anyways. And that's why I feel like that feminine's energy was it's too late to apologize because there's an upset from some behavior that was heartbreaking. Nobody want to fake love, real love. So this to me is like a queen of swords energy. It's the feminine saying, don't come at me with this fake shit. If you want to be real and you want to be honest with me, 
and you want to really, really tell me how you're feeling and you want to open up your heart space to me, whether it's ugly or not, I just want it to be real, then I will take you back. But if you're going to, if you're not going to give me the best of you, then I don't want it. So it's either level up and, and, and open yourself up and be 100% real and authentic. And for me, it's like, I totally identify with that because that's how I feel with anyone. Anybody that I'm dealing with, if I sense any kind of bullshit, any kind of, of, uh, you know, wall or hesitation or mistrust or issues or, you know, whatever. And, and everybody has that. But if you can't be real enough with me to just admit that you have your flaws and that you have your dark shit and that you have shame or that you have these issues, if you can't even be, if, if you hate yourself so much and you're so busy hiding from your own self, you're not going to be, you're not going to be authentic with me. So those kinds of connections whether it's lovers, friends, or even family, it doesn't work for me. So um, this very much depicts my personality. If you want to be real, I will take you all day long. I will take you in your darkness. I will take you with all of your flaws, but you got to be real. And if you're not ready to be real, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. So because that, that, that right there, it's like, cause, cause you're always going to sense a hesitation. You're always going to sense a wall. That person is always going to be playing games or lying to you because they're lying to themselves. That's a problem. So you got the best of me. I'm, I'm getting here now that they gave you the best that they could, but it wasn't enough. And you know, it's not enough. So unless this person wants to be real, it's like, again, it's too late. Like, you're not going to waste any more time in this life on love that is not like 100% pure and real. And 100% pure love doesn't mean it's perfect. It's very flawed, but it's fucking real. And that is not too much to ask of people, but sometimes I guess it is, right? So then there's continued separation problems with people, etc. Sometimes people are not able to come back together because of the work that needs to be done. And some people can do it and other people can't do it. And it's a total bummer, especially if you love people and you really enjoy them, but you just can't operate with them in a constructive way in life. You just can't. So anyways, let's go ahead and continue. H two, it's like I'm going to H two O oxygen, right? We have R. So for some reason, when I picked up the H, I, I heard the word her. Okay. I heard the word her. And I believe that there's a movie called her. Okay. I think it's with Joaquin Phoenix. I've never actually seen it, but I've seen previews on it. And I know that he falls in love with this like artificial intelligence computer. So I have no idea why that is coming to me, but it is. Um, so what I'm seeing here, and, and I, see, we have this water here, breathe H2O. So like water and then oxygen. It's like being underwater, feel like, feel like I'm drowning. Um, but then also like giving me life, bringing me back to life helping me breathe again. There's some kind of an energy here of being saved or having uh, some sort of like thoughts or dreams about water and air and breathing, um, bringing me back to life. It's only her, only she can do this or something like that. Only she can bring um, or shed light to the situation. She's the only one that can like release me from this. There's some kind of... Um, thoughts about this. I don't know what it is. And I hope that makes sense to somebody out there, but maybe it's not supposed to make sense because remember, this is your person's late th night thoughts about you. Their thoughts might not make sense to you because it's theirs. So that's okay. You know, but the um, H and the R, so HR, like HR department, human resources, that can also be something too. This could be somebody that you work with. They could think about work. They could think about, um, you know, their position at work, where they're at, the right thing to do, how to interact with you, etc. So that is what we're getting here. So let's go ahead and get another set. 
All right. What else is this person thinking of late at night about you and this connection? What are their late night thoughts about you? Well, they're if they're listening to music, like they have headphones on or they're like listening to something, like they're really, really thinking about you, okay? I'm getting that immediately with the rhythm energy. And um, we have used this deck, these decks of mine here that are um, the, the music, okay? So there could be certain music that they're listening to, right? Where's the other ones? Just wanted to pull those out. Okay. So spells. We've got bringing on the heartbreak, real love, and apologize. So I do have a divine masculine and divine feminine um, music list in my, um, and I'll try to remember to put it down. Um, or maybe even just the links to these songs. But um, I do have a playlist for these so you guys can listen to these and kind of look at the lyrics and to even derive more messages and information. But I just feel like there's something about the songs that are coming up that are connecting this person to thinking about you, okay? Even though this card means something completely different, but let's read it. We have so much chaos going on throughout the world. I have to tune it out when it gets to be too much. Before I know it, I'm in my own little world where it's just me, my thoughts, my music, and songs that uplift me, songs that calm me because it's about us. You are the rhythm in my heart. Wow. So I, I know this is, it's a cheesy song from the 90s, Rhythm of the Night. <laughs> I have no idea why that's coming to me, but it is. Um, it's not cheesy, actually. It's just like an older song, but some generations might see it's totally cheesy. But uh, yeah, dance song. Um, this person is definitely thinking about you and they're in the rhythm, in their heart space. Remember, you guys, the heart space is where this person really lights up when they think about you and when they feel your energy. Like they're in their heart. You're some sort of calm to them. Uh, songs or your heart energy energy is calming to them. Breathe and finding my inner calm. There it is, you know, and then we have the heart energy, which is being in my heart space. Oh, there it is, very last card, heart space. Okay. You're the rhythm in my heart. That's beautiful. So let's go ahead and get another card. Wow, songs. Holy smokes. <laughs> Out of 100 cards here, well, I guess two less, but that's significant. Songs. It could be like, I mean, obviously, I'm sure at some point most songs are converted to somebody playing it on a guitar, but it could be like an actual, um, you know, like a song that is like, you know, heavy guitar or like a melody or something like that. This person could also be very, uh, artistically or musically inclined. They could be in the music industry for some of you guys. So some of their songs, believe it or not, could be about you <laughs> as in your muse and their creations. I'm getting that now. They don't have to be um, a, a musician. They could just be some kind of a creative person where you have become now a muse for them to express themselves. But they're listening to some sort of music and it's at night and it's bringing them into this world where it's just you and them because it says it because it's about us. It's a world of just you and them is what I'm seeing here. All right. air. Remember I was talking about H2O water and then air. Wow. So what I feel like this is trying to tell us here is like, this is this person's way of communicating with you because maybe right now, like they're underwater, like your connection is somewhere frozen in time, like in a freaking ice pond underwater. And there's a lot of levels or, or layers and a lot of things that we, we need to break the ice in order to come connect or communicate again. So there's a lot of obstacles and there's a lot of like shit in the way. So your person's way to like break through um, to you is to communicate with you through their heart space and they're communicating with you through music. So if you guys are hearing certain songs, this is like your person's higher self communicating with you at this time. 
like they're listening to something specific. So whatever they're listening to at night when they're thinking about you, that's most likely going to pop up in your world. Or it could be maybe something that like they send to you even, you know, some of you could be in separation, but maybe there's like a little bit of contact here and there. I'm getting that for, you know, some of you guys, maybe not all. Um, but yeah, there's, there's something there. Yeah. So they're communicating you, communicating with you through their thoughts and songs, but it's like their heart space too. Oh my I, guys, come on. Really? <laughs> This is so interesting. Yeah, somebody, there, there's got to be someone, and please leave in the comment section below if you want to, um, if this resonates with you. Some of you guys are dealing with a musician because of all this. I mean, you can't, you can't like not see that. It's there. Um, but it says, listen closely, speak wisely. So there's a very, very specific words or lyrics that are just for you. And I feel like, that is something for you, the person watching the video to kind of like decode, right? So if you hear certain songs, really look deeply into that song and uh, don't just look at the title because obviously in this deck here, I've got the title and I've got, you know, like literally a few words of the song, but it's not, you know, a full song. Look deeper into the songs and you will find something that is being communicated to you from this person is what I'm saying here. So listen closely, listen closely with your heart. I am speaking to you. I'm speaking wise words to you. I'm speaking my wisdom. I'm speaking straight from the heart. I, I, am, I am not holding back when I'm communicating with you because it's coming straight from the heart. Oh, actually, I'm gonna do this one here. Ooh, 10 of swords. So remember the 10 of wands that came up? We have the 10 of swords. This ending with this with this person, either the way that they ended things, the way that you ended things, just the way it ended, period, is a real source of sadness and burden for this person. It's um, it's definitely something that they think about for sure. They think about how things ended. They think about the disconnect. We already know that they wish that they could go back and do things differently. You inspire me. I love this. You inspire my creations. You are my muse. I'm getting that. Some of you guys are a muse for this person now. Maybe they're a muse for you too. It's beautiful, but you inspire them. It might be that you inspire them to want to be a better person. You inspire them in some way, some creative way for sure. I was easier to hide from you than to show you who I really was. So... This is speaking of the past. This is speaking of it was easier for me to just, uh, you know, show you some some of me, but not all of me. It was easier for me to just hide how I was really feeling instead of just being completely honest with you. It's easier right now for me to hide from you than to tell you who I really am, which is why I am choosing this form of communication, which is to just think about you and fantasize about you because it's safer. I'm getting that. I'm getting to actually do anything in a physical world sense, like 3D reality is might be too much for this person right now. So that is why they are using this medium in order to connect with you and to communicate with you. Maybe that's just how they have to do it right now. Okay. And again, some of you guys are like, this is bullshit. You need to do this. You need to make a move on this. And they're like, I wish that I could, but I just can't. I just can't do that right now. So maybe it's just going to be the heart energy, the higher self energy, the dreams, the music that, that, that connects you to this person for a period of time. Again, frozen in time, hermit, soul searching. So to me, this is like someone that's when they're, when they're alone. So let's just say this individual, it's not going to be for everybody is, um, in another relationship, like they're with someone else, but when they're on their own, when they're in hermit mode and they're really going deep within and doing some soul searching and reflecting, they're thinking about you for sure. And also you cause this person to really deep look deeply within themselves for the answers that they're seeking. So this is not the kind of thing where they're going to look in the outside world and get some sort of an accurate answer. You know, they're not going to be able to make sense 
uh, of things if, with how they're feeling by looking in the outer world. They're going to have to go within for these answers. They're going to have to connect with their heart. They're going to have to connect with their higher self in order to derive the strength that is needed to be able to push through this obstacle of holding themselves back from, you know, coming back into your life. They're really going to have to do that. And it's, I just been getting here. It's hard for this person. So let's go ahead and get a song here. Blue blood. You made me feel again. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely made this person feel something for sure. And I feel like some of them were, um, they, they felt really good. You, that brought them a lot of joy. They actually think about that feeling and, and it really brings them some sort of joy. But at the same time, it could have scared the shit out of them. And so that was just something that, that was it. You know, it's just too much for them. China. In your eyes, I saw a future together. This is a beautiful song by Tori Amos. And it talks about how she can see the distance that's growing between them. It is an absolutely stunning, my favorite song from her. So listen to it if you guys have a chance. But it's like, when you were with this person and you were spending this time together, then you started to see that they were slowly distancing themselves from you, right? And I just feel like this conversation that they're thinking about in their head, they know that you wanted them in a way that they were not ready for. They, they, they saw in your eyes like how much you cared for them, how much they meant to you. And I feel for some of them, that made them feel something. And some of them liked it at first, but then some of them, it turned to fear shortly after, and they may have sabotaged this connection. All right. Okay, we have B. And what I'm going to do at the very end is I'm going to pull all of the cards together. We have no or it can be on. And then we have an <laughs> interesting bong. <laughs> I have no idea. There could be some sort of a, you know, uh, what is it? Four, 420 situation or whatever. Is that the correct term? I don't know. Um, connected to this person doesn't have to be though, but there it is. Um, but we have, um, I, I, I'm getting gone. Okay. Like gone girl or like, you know, being somebody being gone now. So there's like that feeling of missing this person. So there's a lot of, you know, I, I miss this person. We also have nog as an egg nog. So it, uh, there could be a connection to winter or the holidays where somebody reflects on the time that you guys spent together during the holidays. So that could be highlighted. All right. So those, I'm just drawing three for each one. So let's go ahead and get another set. And then we will put all of the um, letters and word or letters and numbers together. If I could talk, <laughs> okay, let's get one last set. What is this person's late night thoughts about you and this connection? Wow. We have road trip. Uh, this person could have taken a road trip and when they were on that road trip, they could have thought a lot about you. So you know, obviously if someone's on a road trip, they might have to drive late at night or, you know, whatever, but they're thinking of, um, you as they are just kind of doing this mundane, uh, you know, driving activity, you know, a lot for long distances. They could be the kind of person that, you know, likes to travel on the road. Um, but I'm also seeing too, that like they're imagining themselves with you on these trips that they take, like what it would be like to, be on this trip with you, um, what it would be like to travel with you. That's what they're thinking about. But the word does say, I mean, the card does say, I will walk through life with you any day, any time, always and forever. Just hold my hand and don't ever let me go. Let's travel this journey together. As long as you're with me, the road ahead will always be an amazing adventure. So this person actually wishes that you were by their side right now in this life on their current journey. They wish that they were having these experiences with you. Um, so it does make them very nostalgic. And I just feel like it does create frustration for them. We have this um, song, Always and Forever. And I believe it's from Mimi Page. I'll try to remember and put it down, but I absolutely love Mimi Page. A lot of her music really just speaks to my soul. So um, that's what we have, okay? 
Let's go ahead and see what else. We have intensify. It's almost like they have to fan themselves when they think about you. Mm -hmm. And um, the more that they try to like push you out or not think about you, the worse it gets. So there is a little bit of a torturous element here. As much as they might try to, um, it came up earlier, busy themselves with work, like you're still there. So it's a little bit of a haunting energy for me. Maybe when they're alone, like when they're like alone, alone, there are no distractions. They're like on their own, on their road trip. Like this intensifies for them. They really, really think about you. They really feel your energy. We have marriage. Okay. So I'm getting a couple of things. It could be that they're married or in a relationship or you're married or in a relationship, or they just feel like you guys have this sacred union, which is like a marriage, even though marriage might not be, you know, obviously you're not married to this person, um, but it could be for some of you guys. So they think though about this connection, obviously this union wanting to be together with you, what life would be like with you, what it looks like. So they fantasize a lot about what your life together would look like forever as in choosing you as their partner for life. So this individual might finally be ready after a period of being single, playing the field, figuring out who they are, finding themselves, etc., to like settle down. And so they could see you as that ideal partner for them. That you could be that like person that fits that mold. I mean, we did have, I think, the Empress earlier, which is like someone who really, really sees you as the cream of the crop, sees you as the ideal mate. Balance your emotions. There's that water again, right? So I feel like this individual is in their logic and in their emotions. They go back and forth, okay? So when they're in their emotions, they're, they're feeling really like the, the depths of the connection, like they're feeling a lot. And they might not like that because it makes them feel out of control. So they try to balance it with air, as in maybe a little bit of earth and air, which is utilizing their logic and busying themselves with work. They try to put out the flames with this air energy or not air. I'm sorry, with this earth energy. Like they try to throw dirt on it to kind of like tame that fire, like put it out. And I just feel like what's going on is that this person needs, needs this. They need to feel this. They need to, um, they need to think about this. They, they need to. And the reason why is because there's something that they need to do here. And they might not know exactly what that is, but there, that there's a reason that this feeling is with them. There's a reason that this keeps coming up for them because they have to make some sort of move or do something because if they don't, it's like, you're never going to know. You're always going to wonder. You're always going to wonder whether or not this person, you know, cares for you still wants the same things as you is going through a similar journey or something, even though perhaps, you know, they're in another relationship. People are not going to know unless they just you know, throw caution to the wind and, and figure this out. So this energy just keeps intensifying the more that the time, more that time goes on. There's like a sense of urgency to figure things out here or to be with this person and to make them, the, you know, their life partner. Nine of pentacles. So we have the single energy again. So the fact that we had the hermit and now we have the nine of pentacles, those are both cards for me of somebody being alone and being single and being independent. So this person, when they are spending time on their own, when maybe they're not with their other half or they're not like in a relationship and they're single, they're really, really thinking about you. But I feel like even if they're with someone, it's like they are still thinking about you too. And even though we have this beautiful energy of hold my hand, we'll always be together. This person's very balanced. Like they're not that kind of individual that wants to own you or wants to like you guys to be together every single moment of every single day, or just like wants to completely lose themselves, even though they could, they're pretty balanced. So this could be an individual who's like, um, water, but air, 
like a water air sign or they like have a watery dreamy energy but then they also have like a lot of logic too kind of drown like down to earth and grounded like they still have their independence that they want and they want you to have their independence but they also want to walk this life with you so they think a lot about this lifestyle that they could have with you okay I compare others to you. So that's the thing. If this resonates, take it. If this individual is with someone else, they are comparing their current partner to you. Um, or in the past when they've been with other people, even if they're single now, they did compare those people to you. And maybe that's one of the reasons, if this is the story, that they're single now is because they can't replace you. And maybe it has taken time for this individual to come to that conclusion. I remain uncertain on how to navigate our future. Are we really meant to be with one another? So they have, see how they're thinking about the home. They're, they're, they're thinking about the car, the future, coming together, being together, sharing a life together. They're uncertain though. They're uncertain because they don't know how to navigate this. And they think to themselves, are we really meant to be with one another? Is this meant to be? Am I crazy for thinking this? Am I crazy for feeling this? Am I crazy for like, like even imagining that we could have this life together? So their air, do you see how their air is operating? And it's trying to rationalize what they're feeling. So they're in a battle between their head and their heart, you guys. That's what I'm seeing here. Definitely a battle of the heart and the head. So... That might just be what they're going going through right now, which is why they're not reaching out. We have the King of Pentacles. So the King of Pentacles could right now, like he, they could be thinking about wanting to, um, just putting it out there, wanting to like be a partner for you, wanting to like be this King of Pentacles for you, wanting to perhaps have a family or to build a life together. It doesn't even have to include children, but just to build a life together, build a stable foundation, a stable situation between the two of you. They may want that with you. And so, and, and, and it could also be too, like they're maybe older or they're getting older. And so like, they're starting to think about their life and their future in a big way. And in some ways, I'm just seeing here that they're thinking about you being that person to walk this life with and to settle down with for some. All right, let's go ahead and get the song. Lost. I can't muster up the courage. So they are a little lost right now. That's just unfortunately where they're at. They're lost. They can't muster up that courage. We know that they need to step into their power with the horse energy. They're having a hard time getting up on that horse and making a move. obsession wanting and haunting until we die wow so this is the deal you the person watching this video you're very aware of this energy you know that this person is thinking this you know that this person is feeling this way and the reason why is because you're feeling it and you're haunted by it too you want it and you're haunted by it too and you kind of have have this like thought that is this just going to be the way it's going to be forever like are we just always going to feel this way but never do anything about it so there's this real just stuck to a sword's energy that exists between you and this person right now. That's for sure. All right, so let's get our last letters and then we're going to put everything together. Letters and numbers. We have the letter six. So we also had another six earlier. So 66, we have the letter J. Did I say letter six? I meant number six and W. Okay. So JW, that could be someone's... Um, initials right or wj obviously the number six coming through so let's go ahead and get all of these cards with the letters and the numbers just give me a sec you guys just want to make sure i don't forget any okay that was it all right what do we have let's look at this let's look at this energy all right All right, we have W, so we've got the six, we've got J, we got the number two. Did I keep, I keep saying the letter, did I say the letter six? I don't even know. So there's that six, so six, two, six. 
So those look like they're the only numbers that came through. All right, so 66 or 62 or 26, okay? So that could be an age, somebody's age, as in when they finally like make, I, I mean, I hate to say this, you guys, especially if someone's like young right now, that it might take them until they're 62 to make this move. They, they might be, you know, it, it might be that when they're older, like that's when they're going to be ready for this. I don't know. Um, but that could be something significant. We have 66 or 62. We have the, obviously 26 or 626, 662, 266. So take that as it resonates for you. Um, and then we have the W. Let me put this over here. We have P. We have D. B, we have the word no or on. Okay, so it could go either way. All right, so let me go ahead and try to put some things together. If you guys see something, if you want to put it down in the comment section below, just to kind of help some of us out that aren't as quick to see things, that would be great. So I'm trying to fit everything in here so we could see all at the same time. Okay, so I'm getting here the um, name Dawn. Okay, I am getting here, um, let's see, John. So Don and John. I know that there's more th than that. There's also Ron. Um, we have the word rug, right? Or uh, I'm getting rug B, but there's no Y here, but that's just what I'm seeing. Um, where? So even though there's not an E, I'm just like, you know, like, where are you? I'm seeing that. Like, maybe somebody doesn't know where you are. Maybe somebody's searching for you. Maybe we don't have any information, so we're trying to get information about this person, right? So there's something there. Um, we have uh, the word one, so W-O-N, right? So one, so it could be like, a competition, maybe somebody, somebody else has been, um, won over or somebody else is winning in the situation. So that means that there's somebody that's kind of been left behind where somebody has moved forward with their lives. So there could be that. Um, so we also have, let's see here, hug, so really, really wanting to hug someone, really wanting to be in someone's arms. We have rub, so hug and rub. So it's like, you know, wanting to be intimate with someone. So I really picked up on a lot of that energy earlier when it came to this person's thoughts towards you. They're definitely feeling some sort of way. And um, it could even, of course, you know, like have some sort of reaction in their physical body because of those sensations. So there's that. There's much more here, but I don't want to spend too much time. We have grub, so maybe eating with you, going out to dinner with you. There's a lot of memories about, you know, maybe the places that you guys went or the things that you did or those activities. So um, that's what I have. So I really hope that these messages resonated with you guys. And like I said, if you want your own personalized version, either of this reading or just a reading like this, take a look at my menu. And um, yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know your uh, thoughts in the comment section or any of the words that you guys found here on your own. And all my links are down below for all of my cards, like I said, services, as well as my donations links. And um, that's it. That's what I got for you guys. So have an incredible weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.